Dr. Fauci, your take on him. Well, Dr. Fauci said something very unfortunate last weekend. He said that he was science and people who didn't like him don't like science, don't respect science. I think this whole concept of believing in science is foreign to me. I believe in God. Science is something that you trust, you work on, you improve. There's no finality to it. Uh, you, you, and you, don't, you know, we have an, a J. Edgar Hoover of public health right now, and that's not what we want. Third Pennsylvania Senate primary candidate now, Dr. Oz, referring to Dr. Anthony Fauci as, well, you heard it there, J. Edgar Hoover. Joining us now to weigh in on this and other topics making headlines on this Thursday is our panel, founder and CEO of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, and ER doctor and veteran Dr. Omar Hamada. Thank you both for joining us. Good to see your beautiful faces on this Thursday. Good morning. Good to be Good here. Good mornings. So, uh, Dr. Hamada, I want to start with you. There's a lot of controversy, obviously, over Dr. Anthony Fauci, but uh, that comparison to Hoover, uh, what are your thoughts on that? What exactly do you think he meant by that? You know, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe that he uses his position for other agendas that aren't necessarily straightforward. Uh, we'd have to ask Dr. Oz exactly what he meant, but I think Fauci has basically squandered um, his uh, integrity and veracity uh, to promote certain things that uh, many of us don't believe are true. Yeah, but before I you know, get your reaction on this, Melissa, going back to you, Dr. Hamada, I, I, you know, Dr. Oz isn't exactly one to um, not make controversy himself. You may remember back in 2014, he was invited to testify in front of the Senate committee where he felt he was being victimized by his name and his likeness being used without his permission, at which point uh, Senate members criticized him for some of the comments that he's made on his show, such as referring things as a miracle pill and not being as forthcoming as he should be with his audience. So some may argue, and again, just playing devil's advocate, is this basically the pot calling the kettle black? What are your thoughts as a doctor? I think there's certainly evidence there uh, to support that. Um, and, you know, the longer I live and the more um, crazy and hostile our culture gets, the more I see a real need for integrity in every area of our lives. Integrity in terms of what we say, how we live, uh, scientific integrity, etc. So many times we will say things or manipulate the truth a little bit to uh, basically engage our audience better. Uh, and I know that's very common, but uh, as we move forward, people are looking for truth tellers and people are looking for people they can place their trust in because there's so much false misinformation out there. People just don't know who or what to believe anymore. Melissa, I want to get your reaction again to what Dr. Oz uh, had to say in his description of Dr. Anthony Fauci and, and if it's a fair assessment uh, considering his own past. I'm not sure what he meant by that other than the fact that J. Edgar Hoover was a polarizing figure and obviously Dr. Fauci has become a polarizing figure as well. At the beginning of the pandemic going back in March 2020, he definitely was someone that everyone was listening to and as time went on, and the themes seem to change and become more political going into the 2020 election. I think people started to lose trust in him. And now I think his trust has been completely eroded. Watching him yesterday, and I watched the entire press conference yesterday of Fauci, it was like deja vu from March 2020. And I really am concerned about the future. I'm actually more concerned about what decisions Fauci is going to advise the Biden administration to do than I am about the actual virus or contracting the virus. And I'm sure many Americans feel that way, and that's a problem. I am surprised that Dr. Oz is going to run for political office, but in today's day and age, I mean, anything is possible. That, that is true. I'd love to know, since you posed that question, talking about Americans and their thoughts about that, I'd love to know for the viewers that are watching this right now, what do you think about that? You can always weigh in by finding me at Real Miranda Khan, hashtag share your voice. Meanwhile, a federal judge now blocking health care workers uh, that vaccine mandate nationwide. And Representative Jim Jordan says that Biden will lose when it comes to these mandates, which we've been talking about for months now. Take a listen to what he had to say. And I think the courts are going to interpret the Constitution the way anyone with common sense and plain reading would interpret it. So that's why you're seeing so many courts agree with us that this is an unconstitutional mandate placed on the American people. So, Doctor, uh, will the Constitution win in this case? I see you nodding your head there. 
Yeah, I believe it will, and I'm so pleased and relieved that this has actually happened. The federal courts have found with the people, with the Constitution, and against these uh, unconstitutional mandates. Uh, I can't tell you how many people have either lost their jobs already or just gone ahead and quit because of these mandates that they were just not going to abide by. And they had rather give up their livelihood than take the shot or be forced uh, to lie on an exclusion form. And it's interesting, we're going to talk more about the science, but you know, a lot of these people that are losing their jobs, and we've covered it extensively here on this network, have been people in the medical field who don't want to get the vaccine, which is why we're seeing hospital shortages. Melissa, your take on what Jim Jordan had to say. Well, I think the problem is that this is going to end up going to the Supreme Court and it's going to be up to them to decide, well, number one, if they're going to hear the cases, and number two, how are they going to weigh out the decision? I know what the Constitution says. I've read it myself, but the problem is they could interpret it some way differently. And so even though we have a conservative court, some people are not siding on the conservative side. You saw that yesterday if you listened to the, to the hearings um, or the testimony in reference to the abortion case. But as far as the Biden administration goes, they're going to continue to push this regardless of those courts not siding with them. You heard Biden even say yesterday when we came out, when they came out and said about this new variant, he's pushing for businesses to have vaccine mandates, despite what the courts have said. They're going to continue to push it. They're right. going to continue to put pressure on businesses. Whether it's legal or not, again, it's probably going to end up in the Supreme Court. I personally believe that people need to be able to make health choices by themselves. An employer should not be making health decisions for employees. And that's my personal opinion on it. Again, always love to know our viewers' thoughts on this. I know this is a very hot button issue, if not one of the key issues that are on their minds. So if you're watching this, you'd like to weigh in, please do so. We encourage you to do that by finding me at Real Miranda Khan, hashtag share your voice. Meanwhile, the U.S. House of Representatives was set to vote today on a bill funding federal agencies through February 18th after Democrats and Republicans agreed on that date and negotiations aimed at averting a partial government shutdown beginning this weekend. Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell says Republicans will not block a stopgap government funding bill, adding that shutting down the government over opposition to COVID-19 vaccine mandates, well, he says, makes no sense. Remember, a number of Republicans were wanting to do so. He decided not to. And there have been several calls, including from former President Donald Trump, for Mitch McConnell to resign. Uh, your thoughts? Uh, doctor, on, on this, on Republicans deciding not to go that route because of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell deciding that wasn't in the best interest. You know, I'm not exactly sure where he's coming from, but I do think it's a bad idea to not um, do everything we can to stop these illegal mandates uh, because it's destroying our economy, it's destroying the morale of uh, our, our workers, it's destroying health care. Um, so I think any um, Anything that we can do to stop them, uh, we should be doing. Do you agree with that? Do you think Mitch McConnell made a mistake? And could it eventually cost him his job, Melissa? I don't know about Mitch McConnell. And again, we're going into 2022. I think there's going to be a problem. And part of the problem is that the Republican caucus, they're just not strong enough to stand up to some of these ideas by the Democrats who are in charge. So they're pushovers. They're just pushovers. So again, with this with the ceiling uh, of this uh, this timeline looming, which is within the next 24 hours by Friday, they're going to pass something. They can't let it go into the weekend. The market would sell off really hard if they don't. We have the debt ceiling coming up in two more weeks. Yeah. Everything that Congress does, they wait until the very last second and the very last minute. That's bad for markets. It's bad for the American people. It's bad for people that are working, that are waiting to see what's going to happen. But the Republicans just have no backbone. They can never stand up to the Democrats. Well, speaking down to the last minute, uh, we're going to have to leave it right there. But we are going to talk about the economy and the president's plan that he's expected to unveil today when it comes to combating COVID. He's now extending, again, requirements for travelers to wear masks on airplanes. But does that now go against a new study that seems to be putting holes in the effectiveness of wearing those masks. We're going to get our panel to weigh in on that. And again, new jobs number report out. We're going to have our panel weigh in on that, all that and more coming up when News On continues. <laughs>